Hello, this is a TrustBridge webinar originally given in November 2015, re-recorded at a later date. There are three primary organizations that work on historic bridges in Texas. The Texas Historical Commission, or THC, the Texas Department of Transportation, TxDOT, and the Historic Bridge Foundation. Through our partnership, we are developing tools for the local management of historic trust bridges around the state. My name is Linda Henderson, and I'm a historian with the Texas Historical Commission. I serve as the primary liaison to TxDOT for non-archaeological historic properties like historic bridges. I'm joined today by Rebecca DeBrosco. Rebecca, would you please introduce yourself? Hello. I am Rebecca DeBrosco, and I am a historic preservation specialist at TxDOT. I am in charge of TxDOT's Trust Bridge Management Planning Program. Thank you. So in this webinar, we are going to talk about TxDOT's process for a typical historic bridge project, the roles of all the different partners in these types of projects, resources, and next steps. When we originally aired this webinar, we also had a follow-up survey for registrants. That is now closed, but if you ever have any questions about these types of projects, you can always reach out to us. So a few caveats. We are only scratching the surface on what it means to have a historic bridge. In fact, we're just talking about metal truss bridges today. Um, we did host four open houses back in 2015 prior to the original uh, presentation of this webinar. And the results of those open houses and our original webinar post session survey, that can all be found on TxDOT's web pages devoted to historic bridges. And if there's any other information that you or your colleagues might want to know about bridges, again, please let us know and we will prepare another webinar. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca to talk about TxDOT's process. Today, I want to start our presentation by talking about TxDOT structure and organization, and how and when TxDOT deals with historic bridges. This information is not metal truss bridge specific, but rather all historic bridges will follow these processes. However, my examples will deal with metal trusses. TxDOT is divided into 25 districts. Within each district, there are area engineers, and every county has a TxDOT maintenance office. Depending on the size of the county, there may be more than one maintenance office. Each district has its own bridge engineers and designers that work on historic bridge projects in their areas. In addition to the districts, TxDOT has what we call divisions, and those are based in Austin. I work for the Environmental Affairs Division that looks at all environmental consequences related to TxDOT projects. We also have a bridge division that oversees all bridge construction, repairs, and rehabilitation, and a maintenance division that also has some funds for maintenance on bridges. TxDOT has five historians on staff, and each one of us oversees individual districts. You may also interact with each district's environmental coordinator. I know that TxDOT's bureaucracy is large, and it may be difficult to find who to speak with about a project. In that case, I recommend contacting Linda Henderson at the THC, and she will be able to find the appropriate contact for you. There are two types of road systems in Texas, those that we call on system, which are roads like the interstate highway, US highways, and state highways. And those roads, TxDOT is directly responsible for constructing, managing, and maintaining. And then there are the roads that we call off-system, and those are roads owned and operated by cities and counties. Therefore, there are two owners of bridges that are still in vehicular use. On-system, which are TxDOT owned, see the bridges on this map marked in orange, and off-system, which are city and county owned, the bridges on this map in blue. <coughs> As you can see, there are many more off-system bridges than on-system bridges. TxDOT owns 34 of the historic trusses still left in vehicular service in the state, while over 100 are city and county owned. So 
This is a key point to understand. For these off-system bridges, TxDOT has absolutely no say in the maintenance of those bridges, whether or not they are maintained, whether or not they are maintained correctly. TxDOT has no say in closing the bridges, and TxDOT has no say if a local government decides to replace a bridge without TxDOT funding. However, TxDOT does have the responsibility for inspecting all of the bridges in the state. So TxDOT inspects local bridges on a two-year cycle. The results of our inspection may cause us to recommend closure of a bridge. Now, just to complicate matters a bit further, there are truss bridges no longer in vehicular use. Many of these have been bypassed by newer bridges and then left in place. Ownership of these bridges is not always clear and not always easy to uncover. Sometimes, if a bridge was on system but then bypassed, TxDOT still owns the bridge. However, most of the time, if a bridge was bypassed, it is either still owned by the local government that owned the bridge in the first place or owned by another local government after TxDOT gave the bridge to the local government. Other bridges have been completely moved off vehicular systems to other uses, such as hike and bike trails or parks. Generally, this means another owner has stepped in to take the bridge from a transportation agency and it is under new ownership. Other owners of trust bridges in Texas are the railroads, which are completely outside of TxDOT ownership and control. So, when does TxDOT get involved with historic bridges? TxDOT is the state partner for the Federal Highway Administration, which operates the Highway Bridge Program. The Highway Bridge Program is available to all bridges on and off system to replace those bridges that are needed. This is a Federal Highway Administration pot of money with rules and policies for administration written by TxDOT. Bridges are decided for inclusion in the program on a five-year cycle. That means that TxDOT has a list of bridges that need work up to five years out from the current date. Bridges get on this list based on inspections and various engineering calculations. Bridges are scheduled for improvement if they are structurally deficient, which means needing structural work, or functionally obsolete, which means the bridge is too narrow or otherwise unsuited for modern traffic requirements. So, what does it mean to have a bridge programmed for the Highway Bridge Program? The program's monies are designed for replacement of bridges, except if the bridge is historic. When adding bridges to the program, the bridge division consults with the district as well as local officials. The five-year schedule is mostly set in stone, but projects can be fluid based on local needs as well as the availability of funding. Once a bridge is on the programmed list, then the preliminary design and the environmental review process can begin, where TxDOT begins surveys and reports for other issues like archeology, span lead-based paint and asbestos, biological resources like mussels and wetlands, and historic preservation. When working on a project involving historic bridges, there is a multitude of decision-making that goes into determining possibilities. TxDOT sends a bridge engineer familiar with trust bridges out to the bridge to conduct a condition assessment and to develop an updated load rating for the bridge. This assessment documents damage to the bridge itself, to the piers and foundation underneath the bridge, as well as the status of the approach roads. Based on this engineering assessment, TxDOT then determines the heaviest load that can safely cross the bridge. Keep in mind that some bridges are only capable of carrying passenger-sized vehicles. Many school buses, fire trucks, or farming equipment cannot safely and legally cross truss bridges, although many do, and they cause additional damage to the structures. If you are concerned about oversized vehicles damaging your historic bridges, contact local law enforcement. 
In addition to the bridge engineering and load posting calculations, TxDOT also looks at the traffic needs of the surrounding area. To do this, TxDOT collects information from a variety of sources, such as traffic studies, that tell us the average daily traffic at a site, population growth and development in the area, the development or opening of new oil and gas fields, talking with local users such as farmers and ranchers that may need to detour around a bridge with their heavy equipment, and talking with county decision makers about needs identified at a local level. If necessary, TxDOT will examine safety and accident data. We also contact the County Historical Commission to get information on the importance of a bridge to a local area or road network. Once we have our background information in hand, then TxDOT bridge engineers begin looking at various alternatives for the crossing. First, we see if a bridge can remain in place. Can the bridge be rehabilitated for continued vehicular use? Often, this depends on the state of deterioration of the bridge and the metal on the bridge, as well as the traffic needs at the crossing. Is the bridge just too narrow for the traffic that needs to use it today? Has the bridge been too damaged by oversized vehicles on it? Or is its foundation washing away because the stream is changing directions? There are many reasons for and against rehabilitation, but TxDOT rehabilitates historic bridges as much as we possibly can. If the bridge is unable to be rehabilitated and continually used, we then consider if it is feasible to build what we call a one-way pair. That is, we turn the traffic on the bridge to one direction and build a new bridge going in the other direction. This is a common solution for our very large truss bridges, and you may see that in your travels across the state. This allows for heavier traffic to be taken off the historic bridge and can also address problems such as the narrow width of the bridge. We also consider if it is feasible to remove all vehicular traffic from the bridge and turn it into a pedestrian bridge, or whether or not it is appropriate to just leave the historic bridge in place besides a new bridge and basically just monument it there. If the bridge cannot be rehabilitated or bypassed due to factors such as acquiring new right-of-way, design and safety, or location on a rarely used road, then TxDOT examines alternatives to removing the bridge. Trust bridges were sometimes designed to be moved from the factories to their sites and from one site to another as a bridge may be needed. TxDOT looks for new owners of a bridge that may want to move a bridge and reuse it in a park, on a trail, or at a museum. If TxDOT is unable to find a new owner, then a bridge is demolished or sold for scrap metal. An in-depth analysis of the types of alternatives is outside the scope of this presentation, but we hope to have future case studies that can explain the process further. So, you may be thinking, this all sounds very linear and predetermined. Well, there are limited outcomes to what can happen to a trust bridge, but there are multiple opportunities for locals to be involved in a bridge project. So you can do things such as tell us about the traffic needs and volume at a bridge. For example, we learned about one local bridge where ranch employees habitually ignored the load posting signs, causing repeated damage to the bridge. You could tell us about your wishes for the bridge in this location. Do you want it reopened to traffic? Do you think it could be a successful pedestrian bridge? Or if a bridge must be removed, help us find a new owner or a new location for the bridge. And lastly, if bridges are important to you, encourage your bridge owners to contain maintenance of their historic trust bridges. Continue maintenance of historic trust bridges. <laughs> Ultimately, TxDOT takes all the information from the bridge engineers, the road engineers, the local decision makers, and local historians to make a decision about a bridge. In addition to historic preservation, TxDOT must consider engineering judgment, safety, traffic needs, and public concerns, 
when making an ultimate decision about a bridge. In conclusion, I want to touch briefly on costs and TxDOT's limitations when dealing with historic bridges. First, TxDOT only has the ability to fund certain projects for bridges that are in transportation use. TxDOT does not have any funds to provide for maintenance of historic bridges owned by cities or counties. TxDOT cannot require cities or counties to do maintenance on their historic bridges. TxDOT is unable to help in any way on bridges that are off the road system entirely, such as bypass bridges left as monuments or moved bridges with new owners. Second, TxDOT is limited with funding for new uses during an actual project that does not involve the transportation system. The Highway Bridge Program is able to fund demolition and construction of new bridges and rehabilitation of historic bridges. The law does allow TxDOT to use demolition funds. These are the funds we would spend to demolish a bridge for a new bridge, and we're able to use that money on alternatives to save a bridge. However, demolition funds rarely make up the cost of a preservation project, so TxDOT must partner with a local government nonprofit or, or other organization to have a successful preservation project off the transportation system. So, for example, TxDOT estimates the cost to demolish the bridge shown in the photograph to be $90,000. If we need to remove this bridge from transportation use, we do have some options. We can bypass the bridge and rehabilitate it for pedestrian use. However, TxDOT only has $90,000 to spend on pedestrian conversion. The bridge's owner or another partner would need to bring more money to the table to make the bridge safe for pedestrians. We can also move the bridge to another place and reuse it off of the transportation system. TxDOT can spend $90,000 or more to move the bridge to its new location, but it needs the new owner to work on the rehabilitation of the bridge after it is moved. Usually, these bridges need a new deck, pedestrian rails, and paint to stop rust and corrosion. The cost of these projects can be complicated, but TxDOT is committed to help you understand these costs by developing new tools and training. I encourage you to visit TxDOT's Historic Bridges website for more information or to bookmark it as a source of historic bridge data. Visit our website at www.text.gov and in the search box, type in historic bridges. The first page on the search will bring you to our historic bridges page. There we have a map of all the historic bridges in the state, as well as a map of all the trust bridges in the state a visual glossary of metal truss bridge terms, which is very handy if you are not familiar with truss bridge construction. Truss toolkits developed by our bridge engineers to help local governments maintain and repair their truss bridges. These are best practices based on when flood damage, vandalism, impacts, or other things happen at a truss bridge. We also have a toolkit for recommended general maintenance with suggested schedules. You can also find updates on our project, information about the history and types of trust bridges in Texas, and contact information. Texas's historic bridges are a large part of what TxDOT historians handle on a daily basis. Because of the dwindling population of trust bridges, TxDOT is undergoing a management planning process to find ways to keep these bridges as viable resources on the transportation system or in new uses. This management process will be looking at all the trust bridges remaining in Texas and determining which of these bridges should be kept and which bridge may need replacement. Your input to this process will be vital and we will keep you informed through newsletters and other presentations. So thank you for your time. Now I am going to turn the presentation over to Linda Henderson with the Texas Historical Commission. Thank you, Rebecca. As she mentioned, TxDOT has a role in keeping the public informed. Under state and federal laws, we have the 
Section 106 coordination where we, where we have consulting parties entitled to a seat at the table. The THC, as the Texas State Historic Preservation Office, is a de jure consulting party, and in Texas, the Historic Bridge Foundation is a standing consulting party on projects that affect historic bridges. Anyone, and especially county historical commissions and certified local governments, are considered potential consulting parties, and any other local preservation society or group that has a special interest in a resource is also welcome to the table. There's more information on the THC website about what it means to be a consulting party. As the State Historic Preservation Office, the THC works with TxDOT on programmatic and statewide efforts. This ensures a broader perspective on projects where we can have a statewide view of how many bridges are remaining in service and what we can do on a statewide basis. Through that partnership, we have programs such as this webinar. We also have state and federal level agreements where we eliminate unnecessary project coordination and focus on the projects with the greatest potential to affect historic properties. As the State Agency for Historic Preservation, the THC is tasked with providing local communities the tools they need to protect historic resources. We offer many programs from historical markers to tax credits for rehabilitating buildings. We also manage historic sites, provide training for history museums, conduct oral history workshops, administer the Texas Main Street program, and much more. Because of the broad range of work we do, we sometimes find it hard to communicate across program lines to get information to all the right people. And as you might understand, state and federal laws are not engaging for most audiences. Infrastructure like historic bridges may also be less interesting than some of the other high profile programs like courthouses or shipwrecks. But through our partnership with TechSot, the THC is trying to gauge the public's level of concern for these resources while also making sure people know how to get involved in the review process. The Historic Bridge Foundation is a nonprofit advocacy agency, and we're lucky to have them headquartered in Texas. Kitty Henderson is the foundation's executive director, and she works with individuals and communities all around the country. This, this gives that organization a national perspective and through their expertise, they work closely with TxDOT and THC to identify new possible solutions in the state of Texas. You also have an important role. Again, local government, local preservation groups, and others have a seat at the table as a consulting party in the Section 106 process. But also, as Rebecca mentioned, many of these historic bridges are locally owned, and it is up to you to work with local officials on short and long-term solutions for your road and bridge networks. So if you have an interest in bridges, we strongly encourage you to talk to your local officials ahead of any planned project so that you understand the importance of the property and what your possible solutions are. You can look for another webinar that TxDOT and THC did on some possible case studies of, of different bridge projects in various communities around the state. So for other resources, we've mentioned our website. Rebecca's Texas Historic Bridges web pages have a lot of information. This includes a map. She showed you a little bit about, about this earlier. And then we also have at the THC resource pages on historic bridges and roads in Texas. Both of our web pages, again, link back to the other. So if you find yourself on one, you can easily jump to the other one. And on the THC's web pages, we also have information on what it means to be a consulting party on a Section 106 project, what the state laws are that pertain to historic properties, and lots of other information including how to get in touch with local preservationists in your community. Finally, the Historic Bridge Foundation's website has, again, a national perspective, but lots of Texas stories um, as well. And they are a good resource um, for identifying funding sources, but also learning more about how to advocate for local, local properties that you want to protect. So next steps. 
We would like to hear from you, to hear what you want to know about bridges and what is important to you. So we encourage you to get on to TechSop's newsletter uh, mailing list, and we encourage you to invite others to learn more about historic bridges. Work together early and often. Be a good steward of these properties and, and make friends in your communities so that they will work with you in the future when a bridge project comes up. Have a plan for reuse. And also know that maintaining a bridge is a big, a big task, and not every community is up for it, but we encourage you to um, look at what other resources we have for you. Again, here are the, the web, this is the web information for the THC's Bridges website, and we thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Rebecca, also. Thank you, Linda.